Macca is about six or seven years old now. But when we started, we, we, we worked with lots and lots of partner organizations, so over a thousand partner organizations. And we were trying to work out, we used to have these meetings in the Hague, you know, in, in the Netherlands, and everybody would come along and we'd sit. Ah, is that any better? Um, so we, th people would come along to these meetings in The Hague and we'd sit there just doing some presentations and everybody was like... Um, and it just felt wrong that we, we wanted to turn it around into something that was much more active and dynamic and much more about you and the work that you're doing and give you all the chance to really talk to each other about how you're using ACVO tools, what the other problems that you have that maybe we can help you with and, and, and sort of more really, get to know each other and uh, just to get a bit of a feel for it's when you when you're trying to introduce new technology in organizations that have been very are very slow to change and m many of you will know what it's like you just feel like you're <laughs> just pushing this rock and people go well why would i want all of my field team to post status updates on what they do and you know that, that's uh, for me that's a really obvious thing that you would want to do, but a lot, you have to convince time and time and time again. So we've always felt the track day is a time where you can come together with people that you go, ah, oh, you have that problem too, thank you, and you can kind of make friends and talk. At the heart of ACVO is really this idea of if how do you combine the best thinking from the internet industry and from the sort of from from the kind of the, the industry that's rooted in Silicon Valley and, and the industry that's rooted in, in the idea of open source software as well and how do you meld that with international development work um, international development has is often very slow to change and there's a huge task we have ahead of us in the world so that we don't in 10 20 30 40 years time face a world with that is filled with terrible infrastructure that we're going to have to rebuild again in 50 years time because it was just thrown up in all kinds of ways without knowledge being shared or without without really thinking through and really really thinking through what we were trying to achieve and the, those who are interested in how we build this better world um, that there aren't enough ways there haven't been enough ways for us to work together um, I'll talk through specifically more of the problems shortly that, that we, in our experience people in international development face. But this is a day for you to talk about those as well. And I hope that we can give you more confidence to deal with them because, as we share, share knowledge on it. So, but at, at, our, at the heart, ACVO builds internet and mobile phone tools that make it easy to bring development work online at a really big scale um, and we we couldn't have we couldn't do what what we do now five or ten years ago because the development of the internet and mobile phones has, is moving at such a pace that we can now build software computer software that all you need to have is an internet connection a, a, you know any laptop an internet connection and and to be able to sort of use a web browser Ten years ago, we would have had to have people coming in and crawling under your desk in your office, installing databases. And this is a different world we're in now. And um, I think another point is that most of you are working right at the frontier of information technology. The places you're working, communication technology is, is coming into those places for the first time. And it's, it's very hard. It, it, we shouldn't underestimate how hard it is. To, to, to deal with that um, and to make it easy for people to use um, internet tools and mobile phone tools when they're really it's only the first year or two that they've had I mean I've been using computers since I was you know for like for eight, 25 years um, but but a lot of people it's a very new thing now so it's, it's we have to it's really hard to help them get to grips with and we have four key products um, ACVO RSR, it's a really core one. That was the first. That was the, the main product that allows us to bring things online. Acropedia, Outflow, and Open Aid. I'll tell you more about them in a bit. Um, but for us, these are these crazy posters. This Dutch designer designed for us right at the beginning in 2007, and everybody said, "What are you doing those posters for? They're mad." But everybody likes them, so it's like we just keep using them. But 
it, it was always <laughs> this guy Vincent Viers was he, he he said to me I think you know he really helped us work out ultimately the the people that this is all about it's not about empowering bureaucrats to have more control because a lot of the tools that we create and you use could give the bureaucrats more control and they're very seductive for that but it's really important that all of the tools and, and the way that all of you use the tools is about giving people more say in their communities and and opening up that process rather than making it something about about it's, it's got to be from from the bottom up as people say rather than top down um, this is the ACRO team um, we're headquartered in Amsterdam so we've got about uh, 40 people now that was in the really cold ice skating rink in Amsterdam in January Phyllis it was her first time in Europe and she was ice skating uh, for like two minutes yeah <laughs> Francis did well <laughs> as well so this is we're based in Amsterdam here this is 370 year old um, building it's, it's very very beautiful you must all come and visit um, and we've got team a team around the world a lot of we, we're about half of our people are software developers and half of them are people that work in partnerships or communications so we, we, we don't outsource our software development it, we, we have a development team and the plan over time is that they scale so that gives us much more ability to respond to what what you need it's really important that our software is easy for you to use and it's something that we really encourage you to use and take control of yourselves um, so we've got a the, the kind of programs we're involved with now around the world are really substantial we're a not-for-profit organization but we're not for loss either so we we charge for our services and we make we build it into the aid program budgets and development budgets in a way where we we're providing a digital services layer and that means that we can invest back in the software at, in a substantial, a substantial amount of investment. So you get really great software. Um, and, and really, everything we do is about making what used to be complex networks of organizations. And it, it's about making it easier for them to work together, to configure into new programs. We've got Football for Water talking later, which is a new program. And it's lo lots of organizations have been able to set up quickly. Everything's come online. Everybody can contribute, and, and it really makes a difference. Um, we're in the process, particularly here in East Africa, of training hundreds of people. And I, I see some faces here today for the training we did at Kasubu last week, um, such as uh, back there, Fidel, and, and uh, as well. So, and all these people, you're the, you're the people moving forward that, that, that can take, take, this, take these tools forward and make the most of them. Okay, so why? What, why do we? Why are we doing this? Um, when we when we started out looking at this in late in, in sort of late 2006, 2007, everybody said, "Yeah, we need to share knowledge. Everybody needs to share knowledge." But very quickly, we realised that everybody wanted to share knowledge, but they wanted it to be on their own portal. We want to be the leading knowledge sharing organisation. You should join our organisation, and it's like. That was, that was a really hard way around to do it. What we later realized was that, that the real opportunity was, was to bring online existing networks of organizations that had, that had talented people in them, and they had money that was flowing through them. And our, our, our chairman at the time, Jeroen van der Sommen, said to me once, what you have to do is you have to find the people who have a problem, but who also have money. That you could find lots of people who have a problem, but if they haven't got money, it's really hard for you to help them. So what we were able to understand was that at the moment there were people were spending money, organizations, governments were spending money, but um, they didn't know where it was going. Um, it, was, it was really hard for them to, to show. The, the other thing was that they put in place all of these reporting processes. Um, you know, let's teach... Let's teach everybody how to use Microsoft Office so that they can create boring documents that nobody ever reads. And you know, you have all these quarterly, I've got a chuckle down there then. Um, quarterly reporting, so, oh, I'm sorry, I've got to write my next quarterly report this week, and then you're writing another quarterly report next week. And these are long documents that just get sent off and never seen again. Um, and they get locked away. This is the basement of the Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs um, in The Hague. It, this is all dead information. It's just sitting there. The, the other thing is the reporting is ineffective. 
You can't read one of these reports and really get a sense of the people involved. You can't really get a sense of the problems. Everybody's fitting into the template of what they're supposed to be saying. And it's just not giving people what they need. The other fact thing is that the funding isn't transparent. It's not easy for people from outside of the process to understand what money is being spent where. So if, if I'm a citizen, if I'm somebody that, that's living or working in Kasumu, how can I see what, what money is being spent in, in, in my, um, I'm not sure if it's a town or a city, it's a sort of town, big town, small city. And it's, not, it's not easy for people to see that at the moment. Um, it's not easy from either end, actually. From the top end down or from the bottom up. Where does the money that's being spent here? Who spent money on this toilet block that doesn't work? You know, it's really hard to go up the chain. Excuse the pun. Um, the other thing is that field surveys are done by hand. And it's been really interesting as we've, we've one of our tools, Acro Flow, helps people do surveys on mobile phones. All of the stories of like how people just get so bored doing paper-based surveys and it's all this paper and it just never goes to where it needs to be fast and, and people are bored when they're being interviewed and people, there's one lady, Luke interviewed, oh, people cook the surveys because they just sit there and fill them in themselves and, and there's all of these kind of things happen. Okay, so that's the why. Why are we, why are we doing this? Um, oh, I would add something else, which is that the voices of the people actually doing the work are usually not heard. It's usually the people at certain points in the hierarchy that, that get to, to talk. So there's a whole layer of people who are invisible in this process. And this is a, this is a thing that, that is very difficult for organizations to come to terms with. Because once you have teams that have a mobile phone, you'd say you're not allowed to talk or you're not com to communicate through that. It's a, it's a difficult thing for organizations to cope with. So that's the what is ACVO. This is the why are we here. Um, and now this is the how. Our first core product was ACVO RSR. It's, it stands for really simple reporting. And um, what, it's, what it's designed to do is, is help at the moment, lots and lots of, you know, you will have programs that work, that, that are working, that say have, um, that might have 40 projects or 400 projects. And up until now, most, most of those project organizations, they've had a marketing team at the top, and they have a few case studies. This is what we do. Here are some examples. These are the places we work. And they create a map, and that map stays online for like two years or they create a brochure or a leaflet about the program. But what ACVO RSR is designed to do is to, to make it easy to bring all of the, and, and usually these programs have lots of different organizations. So you will have some organizations, so some might be lots of different funders, there might be lots of different support organizations that are coordinating, and then there's lots of local field organizations. And this is really, this was always really hard to kind of visualize on being online. But what ACVO RSR does is it makes it easy to show the whole program. So you can see it on a map, and you can see all the points on a map where the projects are happening. You can understand all the organizations involved, and you can see each project, a description of it, a GPS location for it, so you can see it on, it, on its own map. And then all of the people involved with that project can post status updates. So a bit like Facebook. But, I mean, Facebook's great, and Kenya, everybody loves Facebook, it seems. But Facebook was designed by some guys in a college campus as a dating website. You know, so, oh, what are you doing tonight? What am I doing tonight? It was not designed to bring online international development networks, and it, it just can't do the job. Um, but, but, so what our RSR is designed to do is to bring online all of that portfolio. And the great thing about it is that because it's, it's, it's one system, but it can be branded. So you only have, you have one project that might involve five organizations. And that one project, so, um, you, it can be fed to lots of different websites. So say it's a football for water project that's also with Samavi, and it may be KYFA, or da, 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 da. And the project exists once, everybody updates it, but then it automatically feeds to the different websites. 
So you end up with really interesting ways of publishing um, project activity to multi through multiple organizations. So it's, it's very powerful because before you would have had different organizations trying to tell their own story. And it, it, you, can't, you just can't do this kind of thing without better technology. Okay, so that's ACVO RSR. The thing about ACVO RSR is it's, it's, it's very much about the, the storytellers. It's, it's, it's about how do you tell a story of a project? How do you describe the narrative of a project step by step? You know, it's a water pump project. We've got the sign off to do this here. We've had the community meeting. We've agreed that the community is going to fund 10% of the project. Then the, we've got the equipment has arrived. We've started building it. It's step by step status updates. Um, and this, this, so this is project reporting. The second area is about project evaluation and monitoring. And this is a very established area. Most of you are very, probably very familiar with it. You have, well, the paper surveys that go in and you need to evaluate how well things are going. And um, it's been really obvious that mobile phones would be a really great way to do this. But the question was how? how to make that work. And um, we have a product, project called, uh, a product called ACVO Flow. Now, ACVO Flow was developed by an organization for water for called Water for People. And they designed it around their program. So a very interesting American organization working right around the world, including South America, but also in Africa and Asia. And um, Water for People designed this a couple of years ago and developed it. And then they started talking to us two years ago and said, well, we're an NGO. We're not a software organization, so how would ACVO feel about taking over uh, the product and helping introduce it to a much wider group of people and to continue developing it with, with a dedicated software team? And that's ACVO Flow. So what it does is it's, it's an Android-based um, field survey tool, but it's also um, it has maps and dashboards as well. So because the phone bit is only one part of it. So you've got a, a phone, you can conduct a survey on a phone. We were doing this in Kasumi last week, the, the guys at the back. But you can design, you design the questionnaires online on a computer. And then you can manage fleets of phones. So all of your team have Android phones and you can design and update the surveys. You can update the surveys at late in the evening and then send the surveys automatically to each of your team's phones. So that the next morning when they're going out to do surveys, they've got the latest survey. They enter the surveys and they don't have to have an internet connection. They don't even have to have a phone connection at the time. But they can enter the surveys. It, it understands the GPS of where you are. It uses the camera and the camera phone. And it allows you to do, uh, to get, get the data you need, say if you're surveying a school about the sanitation conditions or a health center, about the process they're going through. And you can get all of that information into that survey on, on the phone. Then when you get back to an internet connection, maybe at your office or maybe on, over, the, um, over, over, the, over the 3G, all the data automatically goes up online. So everybody else involved in the project can see those surveys as well. You can also um, put the data into maps and charts which is a very powerful way of, of, of showing what the latest situation is. So I don't need to tell you how much this can speed up the process of making the case or getting, you know, updating people on what is the situation on the ground. But it's very powerful. Um, and it's being used in lots of places around the world, um, right up to mapping the entire uh, infrastructure status at a country level. So we've been, we're doing very, very significant projects in Liberia and in Ghana now, from that point of view. But there's a lot of work going on in Kenya. OpenAid is it's basically a way to, to make all of the, the spending information about development aid available to everybody. So if you want to know what a budget has been, what, what the, there's a budget that's being spent in a part of Uganda, um, where, where is that money originating from? Now, there's been a lot of work gone on around the world to develop a standard for how to describe aid data. And it's, um, it's called IATI, uh, but it stands for International Aid Transparency Initiative. 
and a, uh, a whole bunch of countries have signed up to it and organizations such as the World Bank. And uh, for them, it's a very big thing. And it, it, it's, it's becoming really important for governments, for country governments, because they want the, the spend data that, that you know, the, when they, they allocate a budget of, say, 10 million euros or 100 million euros, they want to be able to track where it's gone. It comes back to this money not being transparent. So we've been working, um, and Seam will tell you more about how, it, how that's happened, to make this available. Also, it's, you want it to be machine readable, so you can kind of plug in other systems and pull the information out and then join it with other data. So you might want to have budget, what are the programs going on related to healthcare in an area, and combine that with other data about the health of people in that area, and put that into another system. This makes all of that easy. Uh, it's not, still not really easy, but it's a lot easier. And it seem you can tell me if that was an adequate description later. <laughs> and finally, just um, one, one, one last tool. Our last tool is, is, it was our first, actually. And it's called Actopedia. And it's basically, you know, like, have you come across Wikipedia? Yeah? Who knows Wikipedia? OK. Wikipedia is a really good internet encyclopedia that is contributed to by anybody. So um, it, it has paid, you, you can search on for lots and lots of things on Wikipedia, and there was a very good description of it. And it's built on lots of contributors who make little changes online. And um, Acvopedia works in exactly the same way. It's designed to document really good example. well, how low cost appropriate technologies related to water and sanitation. And it's a, it's a resource that's designed to help people understand what, what, what is the best kind of system to use in what, in what situation, and for practitioners to share experience there. So have a look. It's um, acvopedia.org, www.acvopedia.org. You still don't have any questions. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, Seema, OK. How many projects are there currently in Aqua RSR, and what do you? How many projects do you think there will be there in say five years? Um, at the moment, what's the latest figure on projects? In is uh, about uh, 750 plus. It's about 750 projects at the moment. Um, RSR was originally designed for, to be good for small projects, so maybe ten thousand dollar to thirty thousand dollar projects. Um, but, but what's happened lately is that some organizations want to put $1 million projects online. I don't think that's a good direction to take because it makes it really scare, intimidating for people to add updates to a $1 million project. Whereas a, a $10,000 project, it's, you're going to encourage more people to contribute. But um, yeah, we've got about, I think, about 800 at the moment. I would, I'm expecting that to increase substantially. But a big challenge for us is encouraging people to break down projects into smaller pieces. You know, they might want to have a project that's a whole village or whole town. And we're doing, we're helping 20 schools in this town. I, you know, I want that project to be every school. And then you've got a map. You, you yourself will have a map that you can put on your own website which shows all of the schools in the town. And this is the updates from each. So this is a challenge for us at the moment. Yes, Ronnie. Um, is RSR still used for fundraising? Because I remember originally it was raised for fundraising, and then you needed to have the ten thousand dollar projects. But if it's about transparency, it doesn't really make a difference, I suppose, or not? Um, but just to answer this question about fundraising, and how, how in, in our experience, how have our our tools? help that process. So we used to think the most important thing we could do is make it easy for you to put your projects online and have a big button that said donate now. Um, but the thing is, um, actually raising funds for donations is, is a real skill in itself. You have to, you have to run campaigns. You know, pe there is no such thing as one-click philanthropy where people just decide, Hmm, what am I going to do this afternoon? I know, I'm going to go online and look at development projects and click, click. oh yes, I'll fund that, fund that, fund that. I mean, this, this does not happen. Um, so 
really, I think what we found is that the most powerful way, and we do have that feature, you can raise funds, people can click and donate. And it has worked for some people. I've even had people I know who've had weddings where they wanted to offer a water project as their present, and people have funded the water project. But, but really, for all of our organizations, the most important thing is if they bring online the work they do, it builds trust, it makes it much easier for, for others to understand what they do and where. And that makes the money easier for you to secure, to take those things forward. So um, it, it's the, the money donation button is not the main way that I think our tools help people raise more money. But I'm absolutely certain that organizations that bring their projects online, that build trust, that share updates, that, that make it easy for others, professionals, to understand what they do, do secure funds more easily. Thanks for that.